perfect. One of those are different. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good to everyone in the house a little more today. Amen. Uh, for our visitors, welcome to New Destiny Community Church, located here in beautiful Denver, North Carolina. Uh, as always, uh, Sunday service, uh, free service prayer time is around about uh, 9.30 a.m. That's the uh, first door on the right. Uh, once you go on the two glass doors. And uh, morning worship starts at 10.30, and we also have Wednesday night Bible study uh, that uh, starts around 7.15. We encourage everyone to arrive by 7 for a prayer and fellowship before the uh, Bible study begins. Uh, you can also uh, reach Pastor Mike at 704-947-3829. Uh, you can also check out our website, www.newdestinydenver.org. And uh, you can also get on our uh, emailing list. Just go to the info at newdestinydenver.org. And uh, we're uh, thankful for our music director, uh, Mr. Tim Egan. Uh, he's not uh, here today. He's uh, out of town, or uh, out of state, I should say. Also, our uh, food director, Ms. Marla Hewlin. Uh, don't see her here either. Uh, but yeah, anytime there's uh, anything at the, the church or any events we're going to that concern food, uh, she's the one to speak with. Also, uh, Ms. Uh, Crystal Gardner, uh, she's out of town with Tim. Uh, they're up in uh, New Jersey. Glad they got there safely. She, uh, uh, Crystal puts the, uh, the bulletin together. Also, I'm thankful for uh, Pastor Joan, seated right here. She's uh, the youth minister and also the photographer. And uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, we have a uh, water baptism uh, July 23rd. That's uh, after the morning service. That is uh, one week from today. Uh, also, the next church luncheon uh, will be July 23rd. Uh, again, that's uh, after uh, baptism. Uh, next sun uh, Sunday communion will be July 30th. Uh, that'll be two weeks from today. And also the, uh, the, the Love Denver, uh, I believe that's a back-to-school event. Uh, yes. that, that'll be uh, held August 19th. I know uh, New Destiny, we've uh, participated in that for the past couple of years, yes. I believe. Yeah. Uh, the Church of the Month that we are praying for is uh, Greater Life Church. And it's uh, led by Pastor Andrew Bird and Pastor Randy Briscoe. As they say, now we are one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so uh, Pastors uh, Andrew and Randy, uh, they now co-pastor this uh, Spearfield Church. Uh, they're currently in the process of uh, uh, building a new facility. Uh, so uh, let's uh, pray for them that you know everything goes well. There's no delays and uh, no issues in construction. Uh, and we also pray for the construction workers and the builders and all who uh, are involved in the preparation and building of uh, God's new home for uh, Greater Life Church and its family. And of course, uh, it is summertime, so it's uh, pretty hot out there. And so yeah, definitely uh, pray for those that have to work out uh, in it. Um, like hours on end. Uh, also remember to check, our, uh, check out our website uh, for changes in uh, past devotionals. Uh, also, uh, please give faithfully and uh, with a cheerful heart. Uh, you can either give online or in one of the offering plates uh, placed in front or in back of the church. Just uh, uh, give wherever your uh, heart leads. And uh, you can also uh, you can text Pastor Mike at 803-448-5699 or you can email him at pastormteeter at hotmail.com or speak to him in person uh, for prayer and prayer requests. And uh, so uh, today's sermon is entitled, Is There Not a Cause? 1 Samuel 17, 29. Uh, any prayer requests at this time? I'm going to pray for Balaam. She has been suffering with a stomach issue for the last few days. And she was up the majority of the night last night. Really never been sleeping. So mm -hmm. We'll be in prayer for her. Also, I see a uh, Doing well here, Matt, uh, Sam's brother in law, but that's, that's who it is. Yeah. I'm not quite. Almost. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Oh, my bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> they've, been, they've been dating so long. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, uh, we'll definitely keep them in prayer. Uh, any other requests at the moment? Any unspoken requests? The Lord knows all about it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us and this time that we get to spend in your house with your children. We pray for our little Balaam that you will place your hand of healing upon her and take this illness out of her body. And she will be able to sleep peacefully through the night and she can return to us here at New Destiny. We also pray for Matt. Uh, we pray that your hand of healing is upon him as well. We know it is. We know that you are working in the lives Everyone that prays for healing and help through 
tough times in, of struggle, uh, tough times in health, finances, whatever the case may be, you are aware of the issue. Yes. You are working in the lives of all those that have unspoken requests. We know that you are going to show up today in a great, powerful yes. way. Yes. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Well, it's good to be in the house of God. And it's good that we have air conditioning. Is that not right? Amen. 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 It is, and got, it's gotten hot recently. Is that right? So if it's hot, you want to either be in air conditioning or in the pool, right? All right. So uh, anyways, uh, to start out with, Dwayne's going to share a couple songs, and uh, then we'll have a worship team. <laughs> Tear me apart. We'll see. <clears throat> well, you know, it's all about we got a cause. Amen. That cause goes to each and every one of us that are in the congregation and are watching. Um, we have a purpose. We have to spread the word. I'll and that's it. our job. Amen. Go ahead, David. Uh, which one? Mm -hmm. He can, he can fix it. No deal. Street preacher. Yep. <clears throat> he said that you're going to follow me. You have to call me master. You have to make me the Lord and master of your life. He said if any man is to follow me, he'll have to deny himself. Then he'll have to take up a cross. He'll have to come and be willing to die with me, no matter what it costs. Back in my hometown, the world's known street preacher. Stood on the corner night and day At the top of his voice He would shout at the people Jesus is the truth, the life, the way Then one night a stranger came Said stop preaching in that name As he held a gun up to that old man's head He said I hope you understood I can sign the truth for good and the old man looked him dead in the eye and said, You can't kill a man who's already dead. You can't let me with heaven. And he said, Here's the reason why my sins are gone and I won't give them. I'll just start living when I die.
you have something great. If you don't, that's fine. Whatever God leads you, okay? And uh, we'll wait a moment, and then we'll pray with the offering. And now, however, uh, what was it Jackie taught? If you don't have something, just get some from your grandma's purse. Okay, you can go to grandma's purse. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jackie will tell you that story sometime. All right. What did I say? If you don't have some, go in someone's wallet that does. All right. It's, uh, it's, uh, all right, Caitlin, thank you. And uh, let's pray. And uh, then we're going to worship the Lord. We have uh, four songs this morning. But listen, more than the right song, more than how well they sound, let's glorify God. Let's worship the Lord. Let's be in His presence. Uh, I do appreciate good friend Sam. Uh, he helped at the ramp, but he's also played with the Melissa in, in the past. And uh, he's a good friend of mine. And uh, I'll tell the story. Hey, uh, we were helping with an outreach called Halloween. If you get a chance, go see it. I guess they're doing it again this year. Have they put it there? Uh, I believe they agreed okay. to it. They did? Okay. <laughs> was it 15th year? Yeah. And I started the second year. I started coming. So me and Sam were doing something where we, uh, the devil comes down and we pull a thing underneath. And I had helped him a couple times. And then next thing, uh, you couldn't find me. I was talking to Melissa. <laughs> also, and he forgave me since we got married. So, and I'm a pastor, and I apologized. I repented. So, anyways, Lord God, we just pray right now that you will further the kingdom with, with uh, our church, but with our lives. As Dwayne mentioned a minute ago, that's the biggest cause: is to live the life and spread the gospel. And we know there's even more causes, meaning direct callings, direct purpose you have for each one of us. But we pray that you will use these funds and uh, these resources and that you would further the cause of Christ here in Denver, North Carolina, in this area, this community, the Stanley, Denver, Lowesville, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, we pray over the music team, over the worship, uh, that you would just fill this place with your presence and your spirit. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Can y'all say this? Ain't nobody stealing my joy. Ain't nobody Amen. stealing my joy. Ain't nobody stealing I want my you to like, believe it. Okay? That's what we're going to sing right now. And we can just say it and not believe it. I want you to believe it. Because we all go through stuff, hard stuff. But God God gives us the joy. It's not yes, our circumstances. Amen. Yeah. That's right. <laughs>
we come before you and we know it as well with our soul because our hope is in you because nothing surprises you because we are in your hands Lord God and we thank you it is well because we know that nothing surprises you, nothing shocks you. We know, Lord God, that we are in your hands. And we know, Lord God, that you are faithful, that you are faithful. And as we put our faith in you and as we obey you, we do not have to worry, stress, or lose our peace. Yes. Amen. We're training our sorrows and we're looking to you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God. And Lord, I pray over this few moments that we are together, this hour, hour and a half, this moment as we are looking at your word, that, that we will be transformed, that we would move closer to you, that we would uh, live for the cause, but also the, great, the greatest cause of being alive in you, but also the cause, purposes you have for us as a church and you have for each one of us in the name of Jesus and Lord God we thank you give us ears to hear give us hearts to receive in the name of Jesus amen amen if you turn to 1 Samuel 17 1 Samuel 17 be ready uh, Dave uh, soon they will probably put the PowerPoint up there as we, when we get there but however and Dave does a great job I appreciate him and uh, I used to he put on my phone, I think it did, used to say, Radio Man Day, right? And uh, so that's where I met him from uh, when I used to do the radio ministry. And, and, uh, but a uh, good friend, and they uh, baptized him next week. And uh, it's going to be good. I'm glad. And uh, Dave's ready. Ready to be obedient, as Melissa said years ago when she got baptized. So uh, be there, First Samuel 17, is there not a cause, part two? I feel good, I have a little pain in the back, all right? When you get those once in a while, right? But you know what, I feel 10 times better than last week, and uh, I, I had the worst migraine I've ever had, and uh, where I could not move, couldn't get out of bed. Now we think it may have been uh, cheap sheets, dyed sheets on our bed that I was allergic possibly. Uh, so much you got, I give you permission to spend a little more money on sheets, all right? All right, it's not worth it. It's not worth it, all right? I'll sleep on a blanket. I'll sleep outside. It's not worth it, all right? So anyways, last Monday, I had a, my every three-month doctor visit with the cancer. Every six-month with the CT scan. I wasn't, uh, I'm a man of faith, okay? I was a little nervous because of being sick. Uh, but not majorly, just a little. And uh, but I went to uh, the doctor, and uh, after the scan that morning, he said, "Mike, you're all clear." Praise the Lord. And I said, "Praise the Lord." I got the bracelet. I, I keep them all the time. Put them on my Bible to remind me. You know what? Every day I'm alive. You know what? Living with peace, right. living with joy. And yes, I, I want to succeed at work. I want to succeed at, at church, ministry, so forth. But you know what? I find out success. This, uh, the other night, my son wanted me to read to him. Wow, he's just now settling so now where he'll sit down. And so I read him three books, and he wanted to continue. But then I think... Uh, uh, Melissa says it's time to take care of your daughter now. All right, it's the next job. And uh, so, you know what? That right there is living the dream, all right? Yeah. It's living the dream when you're playing ball. I can play ball with that boy, all right? And uh, and so, and you know, doing so okay. But I'm saying sometimes we lose what understanding on what, what uh, the cause is about. Yes, it's about spreading the gospel, Dwayne. That's right. Amen. It's about, but it's about living the cause of Christ every That's day right. in everything and all we do. That's proof. We did talk about, what is it? The proof, undeniable proof for a while. That's proof. How we live. I'm, now I'm getting on to my points. I better get... Yes, but yeah, praise God, I'm healed, the doctor said. And then I went to the eye doctor. I was like, maybe it's my eyes, uh, you know? And then he said, no, hadn't changed. <laughs> and uh, So I'm getting some glasses because you should not wear contacts all the time. So in a couple of weeks, I may preach with some glasses, look dignified, you know, look, uh, you know, pretty cool. I had two ladies help me pick them up, Melissa, all right, so should be good, all right? If you want to look fashionable, let the ladies pick, well, not saying that all the time, all right? 
Maybe, maybe Dave, maybe Dave is fashion. I don't know. Maybe Dwayne, uh, but I don't know Melissa pick out the fashion. But listen, when we say I live, I live with purpose, a cause. Uh, First Samuel 17, 29. So many people. I'm recapping a little bit, using the news a little bit. But so many people they live with no purpose. Right. No cause. They get up each day and their whole purpose is to get to Friday to go out and party and waste their money. To go out and just have a, you know what, a hellish time. Is that right? That's right. what many people's purpose right. is. Maybe some, maybe some in here, some that may watch, maybe that was your purpose at one time. You hear about people, I'll make it. If I can make it to Friday, or if I can make it to the beach, or if I can make it and get a nice big house. I think Sam's parents have a big house. Isn't it like 5,000 square feet? But they have eight kids and about, I don't know if there's any grandkids yet. Is there any yet? No. So they're all gonna come at once, like 10 in one year, all right? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, another sibling got married last night. And I did goof. It's not brother-in-law, but he's just been dating his sister for like seven years or something like that. And so, yeah, all right. So, never know. I'm not. I'm not prophesying. All right. Let the, let each person make that decision. And uh, but, what do you think? End of the first year, right? He got married last August, right? Yes. And I saw a picture. I've never seen it until recently where you were carrying her out of the church. All right, that was pretty cute. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, Sam, uh, he's. He, can do it, yeah. Well, not, it was like one arm. All right, yeah. one arm. There you go. All right, make it sound better. Okay. And so, listen, but but if we're really going to live to the cause, I. By the way, okay, I was going to wait, but so I mentioned about Patty Corn. Uh, I saw her on the way to church actually this morning. I was driving. She was near the Catholic Church, and she was getting ready to pick up traps. And so I'll share the story. Uh, my parents weren't here. Um, Sam and Brittany weren't were here. So there's a lady in our community named Patty Corn, and there's articles I looked online where she, about 12 years ago, got in her mind the cause to clean up the Denver, this area. And she will literally be out there at 6 in the morning picking up trash. Picking up trash, picking up old tires, picking up old TVs. This lady gets a workout, all right? And, uh, and it's amazing. And so I found, then I was looking in the Denver paper this past Friday, it comes out on Friday, and there's an update about Patty, about her. So if you want to look at it later, but corn expands cleanup. So now she's on some kind of committee with the county, and she's organizing different people to clean up the community. Now this is, a good, I say it is a good cause. How many would say it's a good cause? Now, Amen. this is not something every one of us are going to jump in and do. We don't have the time to do, or that maybe that's not our purpose. But it should be a purpose if we're walking in the church and you see trash. I hope we pick it up. I, I hope we don't just go, well, I didn't know it. I've had Caitlin say it to me before, or say to my mom and Melissa. I didn't do it. Caleb did it. <laughs> well, you know what? We're a family. Caleb's going to learn. We're going to teach him too. But yeah, pick up the trash. And now I talk about this cause because, listen, there, there are a lot of good causes. Now, the greatest cause is the cause of, of Christ, certainly. But uh, we also need to understand there are a cause and purpose for each church. We've been talking about a church of the month. And and, uh, you know, we've been picking during church because why? Because it's about the kingdom. It's about the church, most important. Is that right? We lock arms. And uh, I, I'm amazed. Uh, first Sunday, Rock Hill, Pastor Bernie even shared when he came by for the workday, man, that the giving for missions is going up again. And I said, really? You got more, you know, do you have a few more people? Or how's, No, we have less people. They're doing less, or uh, doing more with less. Uh, and uh, now I, I don't know how many lives. I don't I think they still got a good amount of people. But the point is, is you know what? God can do more with people that are focused on the cause of Christ. And that was for missions. Now, I believe they lumped it together missions, outreach, all together. Is that right, Sam? Is that what you understand? And it was something like 150,000 of a church that's around, around a little less than 200, is my understanding. So it's so about a thousand a person to missions. And so that's amazing. That's all I'll say. It's amazing they got focused on that cause. And, 
And you know, it's amazing what we can do when we are focused on the cause of Christ. I will stop for just a moment, but 1 Samuel 17, we'll jump on some more. On the newsletter, I did mention that it takes determination, it takes commitment, it takes being determined, and uh, counting the costs. But I want to share five from the cause. But I do want to mention just a couple things, just a reminder, church lunch and so on. We're going to go ahead, uh, Melissa and I will get a uh, sandwich platter, uh, Dwayne and Marla, they're going to cover something of entree type. Everyone else uh, covers side dishes and like dessert, that type of uh, thing. Uh, we're calling it favorite, best dish, so you just pray about it and do the one you feel led to do. And uh, we're going to have a good time next Sunday. I just want to mention that real quick and uh, so forth. So let's look at, we'll go to the point, 1 Samuel 17. We'll start in verse 20. And uh, I have my Bible I got when I was preaching out in York, South Carolina. And uh, so this is a anointed York, South Carolina Bible. All right. And uh, so verse 20. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came <clears throat> to, to the trench as the Lord was going forth to the fight and shouted to the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array. <coughs> army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brother. And he talked with them. Behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name out of the armies of the Philistines, and he spake according to the same words. And David heard them, all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were too were, were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel as he come up? And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him and saith, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? And taketh away, taketh away the approach, reproach of Israel. For which is the uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And I'm going to read the last two. If you'd like to stand, you're welcome to. If not, you can stay seated. But let's look at these two highlight ones. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David and said, Why cometh thou down hither? And with, and with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thy heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest <coughs> see the battle. And David, right here, and David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? And so as we look at this, you can be seated. Lord God, we thank you. We just pray, give us ears to hear, give us hearts to understand what you would show us in the next few minutes. For Lord, we know that there is a great cause. And we know that you have a cause and a purpose for us as a church, but also for each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to share one thing that I have in this PowerPoint, that little uh, graphic says, stand up for what you believe in, even if it means standing alone. And we know in the story of David and Goliath, listen, at that point, what David was standing alone. There was no other person saying like, well, well, five of us can go take a life. No, it was David. 
And how do we have the confidence, uh, the know-how, the will-how, and, the, and the, the fortitude was why he had been in God's presence. Yes. He had been what, taking care of sheep. And so, listen, there was no hesitation with David. Do we, did you notice that? He didn't hesitate. He just saw what was going on. He asked a few questions, but no, he did not hesitate. And listen, I'm believing that, and, uh, that, that, that with each one of us, we're going to be to the point if we're not there yet, that there won't be a hesitation. It won't be us asking, well, who else is going to stand up for Jesus? Or who else is going to help with that missions, uh, uh, missionary? Or who else is going to do? I, I've heard, you've heard me say this, and I'll say it again. Don't determine what you're going to do based off of popularity, based off of what other people may or may not do. Don't determine it on how many people may or may not do it. Determine it on if that's what God wants you to do and just obey, period. And listen, there's a lot of good stuff. Now, now the biggest thing is our life. We obey. We live according to God's Word. We, we, we be proof of His love. That's all right up there. But then there's things that God wants us to do specifically. And we must obey God. I had someone ask a couple weeks ago when we were uh, going uh, over the fireworks. They said, well, I, I, who's going to be there? I said 10,000 people. 10,000 plus people, which is true. Everyone that would see the fireworks, although it got delayed. So probably the last, by the time it happened. But you know, the person was actually saying, how many that we know? How many this? And I'm like... You know what? Have the determination that, you know what? If you want to be out there, if you want to be a light, be there. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, but I know sometimes people aren't the stone nature, the pillar nature yet. They got a little bit of reed in them. And uh, we've been learning on Wednesday night, like Peter. And uh, that's fine. So we share. But, but listen, on this house, I believe that those here, matter of fact, I believe just with those here today, if we become focused on the cause of Christ, we become focused and determined and committed like David, we see in this passage, then you know what? A month, from, three months from now, six months from now, we're going to begin to see the coal, the fire of God on us begin to spread. Amen? Yes. And you know what? I like the end of the story on that David and Goliath. That's not what we're focused on today, but I like it, man. He, he didn't have a sword. He would have used Goliath's sword. And then what did he do? God did it. He hold the enemy's head and said, God did it, right? Went around and said, you know what? Here's what I think of uh, Goliath. And so um, you want to take down points. I want to skip the, those few first few verses because it mentions, I mentioned it last week from Galatians chapter 4, is that you know there's a lot of good causes. There's a lot of things people get, uh, you know, purposed in, but uh, they're good, but what's best? What's the best cause? And so look, the first point of uh, <coughs> this morning, the first thing, the characteristics that we need if we're going to stand for the cause of Christ long term. I heard that statistic recently, uh, again, that only 10% of those that go into ministry in their like early 20s will still be a minister of some sort when they retire. In other words, 60, 65. But you know why? It's because they get uh, they lose their peace. Why? Because they, they get uh, pulled from emotion by circumstances. And listen, it's not easy. Being a Christian is not easy. It, it was the Word tells us to pick up our cross. Right? It's telling us to lay down our life. It's telling us what? That, that I heard people say, well, the, the gospel of Jesus, it's loving and it's caring. And it is. But it's also what? It offend people. Amen. We're telling people they have to, their life, they don't have to change their life. God will change their life. What are we saying when we get baptized in water? People say, I've heard people say, well, I've got to be discipled enough. I've got to be mature enough. No, that's just declaring you've made a decision and you're out of obedience, declaring to the world that that you're no longer the same. Dave, when you, you, I know you're no longer the same already, but you're you're going under, and um, you better be nice over to me this week, but no, then I'll bring you up. You are New Dave. Yeah. Matter of fact, why don't we just call him New Dave, all right? Yeah. Do you remember back uh, 20, 30 years ago, they had New Coke, 
and it didn't pass. But Dave, this is going to be better. Dave, Dave's going to be better than that new coke, all right? And so listen, first thing, I put this on the highest of importance. I shared about, mentioned about Billy Graham about a month ago. Is that what do I, what do we, why do we listen to Billy Graham? Because of his integrity, right? His character. So the first thing is character. First thing that you see, Proverbs 28, verse 6, better is the poor who walks in his integrity than one perverse in his ways, though he be rich. What my characters, so listen, some will live for the cause of Christ, or some will live according to the purpose and that they tell people what? When they're being watched. When people can see them. How many not ever seen that? When they get paid, when they get what a promotion, when they get a bonus, when they get what a thank you, a pat on the back. You know what they they, they, they didn't want to take they, they do the cause. That when and have that. You know, some people will do it when when the limelight's on them. But you know what character is when we do it 24-7. Yeah. When we are focused on what the, the cause of Christ, when you know, I've heard some people that I've heard some where uh, marriages or families where a guy will always be careful of guys too, you know, GQ. I mean too suave, alright? That's a lifetime movie. All right, just, uh, you know what? What is that guy 24-7? How does he treat his children and his wife? How does he treat people at work? Character. Romans 13, 14, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Matter of fact, I heard a saying that, <clears throat> that I have used a few times but listen, how do we know what so if they're living, if someone really is living for the cause of Christ, how do we know if someone is really living the, the purpose that God spoke to them? They may post it on Facebook one time. They may book but, but check out their what? Their five closest friends, people they hang with. If you know them, you'll know that person. Check out how they spend their time, their money, and their resources. Do you all agree? Is that true? You're most likely going to know that person <clears throat> over a say over a month period even. Secondly, listen, you can have somebody that's determined. You can have somebody that makes a decision. You can have somebody that that wants to you know has good character, good integrity. But you need someone that's what a, available, someone that that says, "Here am I." You know. Uh, I've had sometimes where you hear a good service or a good youth camp or a good revival service and they do the call and, and you'll see some people that will answer no matter what. Have you ever seen that? Now, now let's be honest. Some calls, you don't need to answer the missionary call meaning I'm called to be a missionary if you're not, okay? If, it, if they say, you know, who's going to go do it? Some people raise their hand every time and, and you know what? It, it should be Isaiah 6, 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord say, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. Now understand that we're available for what? The cause of Christ, for the gospel, yes. But when it comes to a certain uh, uh, calling or a certain purpose, we need to say, God, I'm called to you, but do I answer this? And what do we say is I'm available for whatever you want, God. I'm available for what you want from me. 2 Timothy 4, 2. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Now understand this. I also believe we apply this in living our life. Be ready at all times. Now how are we ready at all times? By us, what? Studying the Word. Being in the Word. How do we do it? By making godly habits. Uh, taught on that back in January one time and then on Father's Day is having godly habits. Yeah. Life habits. What is life habits? Uh, one example I mentioned recently, I uh, get up, get in the shower, get up, wait, wake up, get up and get excited. Yeah. All right? Get excited because you're alive. Not get excited because what? 
You got it. I said, well, it's good to get excited. You get extra money. That's all right. All right. It's good to get excited over some good food. All right. Who gets excited over some good, tasty food? Uh, Dave, raise your hand. All right. There you go. He's quick. All right. And, um, but thirdly, you know why some people, uh, they can't stick to the cause? Because they're divided. I believe if you look at uh, many of the translations, Psalms 86, verse 11, it says united. All right? Says unite. Is that you see that uh, some of you? But on one and on the one, I I just like this wording. Psalm eighty six eleven. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Even now, unite my heart to the cause. Now, what does that mean? Sometimes, if we're not careful, what is it? In Revelation, it says, "Be hot or cold." Otherwise, I'll spit you out. We need to be what? Hot and not allowing things to detour us. Like Melissa said before that first song, is what? Uh, no one, not, nothing stealing my joy. And be determined each day, every day. I'm going to have a good day. Matter of fact, I guarantee you, if you begin to do that, now don't lie, but have life words, you'll notice a difference. When you had the determination, I had a, a friend, well, actually, I, had, I youth pastor him 20 years ago, and he's been a youth pastor, and now he's transitioning to family ministry, and he saw me posting some, some of that, and he goes, he just put a perspective on my comment. I said, well, that is true. Much of how we perceive things is perspective and attitude. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And people can have the same, go to the same restaurant, have the same food, and one can give a you know, wow, it was wonderful. And other people, it was a little not salty and it just was not good. And a lot of it is perspective. But listen, if we are really going to see God do something, we'll have focus, be focused in unity on, on God, the Word of God, but we'll be undivided. Right here, and, and uh, one of the translations, teach me thy way, O Lord. I walk in the truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Yes. Amen. Number four, and call C A U S stable. Psalm 62, verse 2. He only is my rock and my salvation. This is on the front of the bulletin. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Listen, if you remember in that uh, verse, uh, look at verse 28, it was like, all you're trying to do is be in the spotlight. All you are trying to do, go, but why aren't you with the sheep? What did David do? He said, what are you, is there not a cause? And, and he just did what he knew he should do. You know what in life? Don't worry about what people think or don't think. Don't worry about... Uh, how many people are going to like you or not like you? Now it seems like people to think that they're successful or their church is successful is not only how well it's going, but how many likes you get on uh, social media or how many thumbs up or now they got all these icons, you know, happy faces, all this. No, what really matters is did you do what God wants? Are you moving yes. forward regardless of what people think or people say? Just do the right thing, period. I see so many people, and hey, I'm in guilty some, is they get moved by the weather. They get moved by the, the enemy. Listen, if God says, let's do it. If God has a greater cause, it doesn't mean there won't be any obstacles. Do we realize that? It doesn't mean there won't be some giant in the way. It doesn't mean there won't take some uh, growing to do. Matter of fact, if, if we're going to see greater purposes in our lives, you have to be greater, I used to hear it, greater level, greater devil. And you know, for each one of us, it's the same thing. As we move forward, we will have challenges. And I am uh, actually in, <clears throat> going to an encouragement over the last month. Uh, Maybe I didn't see it. Maybe you hit a, yelled at the wall. But he, uh, his wife uh, had a car wreck. That was one, right? And uh, he, then a week, a little over a week ago, 
uh, else uh, I don't think it's a direct tip, but a tornado hits them, their house, and brings down power lines, brings down part of the tree, and uh, and then uh, he comes and he still seems pretty bothered. Then tonight he's tired because he slept a couple hours because his granddaughter uh, was not feeling well. And Dwayne is being stable. All right, good yes. job, Dwayne. And yes, how many can say? Sometimes we go, how much more? All right. How many of you ever felt that way? How much more can happen? Yeah. Um, I have, um, we'll pray at the end, but a, a young man used to come here years ago, Aaron. Apparently he's still struggling. I got a message from his mom this morning over the passing of his dad, and, and uh, we'll keep him in prayer. But you know, through, through it all, when uh, my father-in-law passed away, one thing their pastor told them, told uh, Marilyn, her mom especially, is, you know what, you may not feel it, you may not, you just may feel numb. Just worship God, be in God's presence, and God will help you through it. And sometimes in life we're not feeling it, but you know what we have to do is just take one foot and go in front of the other and, uh, and be stable. No, He is our rock. <clears throat> Last point I just want to share in that call, C-A-U-S-E, is an expectancy. Listen, I would challenge, I believe that David woke up each day expecting to hear from God. Yes. I, I believe he wasn't necessarily expecting to, to fight Goliath that day, but I believe he was expecting to, to hear God's voice. And, and I believe he expected that God would move through him. I would challenge God's Word. Actually, God's Word would challenge us is what? To live in expectancy. Amen. Psalm 5.3 In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait <coughs> expectantly. Listen, I'm just uh, still excited. I got a message a couple days ago. Zach, uh, he said, hey, we're going to have door for you. I'll probably have it next week. And I don't know if y'all knew. Probably shouldn't be video on this. But uh, this door is not really safe. It's about to fall apart, right, Dwayne? You can look at it. And needless to say, for security and safety, because... Man, we could have a jailer with the worship team. That won't happen. We're safe. But still, you need a way out. Uh, now, it seems like if I'm here, I'm turning to the door. All right? It's, it's going to open. But uh, we, we want one so it's a little easier and uh, safe. And would you not know that his dad, catch this. This is how kind of favor I've been seeing here since we've been focusing on the church of the month and saying that, you know, not just saying, but understand it's not just about our church only, but then now on greater focus on missions. His dad does commercial doors. I mean, that's just amazing how God connects. And, and I'm excited. You might be like, well, you're excited about a door. Well, yes, because you all need to be safe and we need a place that, that's safe and secure and so forth. That excites me. It excites me that uh, we got a ramp. I don't know if anybody's been using it. I was teasing Jones saying he'd been grabbing a skateboard going down the ramp uh, during the week, trying it out. And uh, But our plan is people come in on the ramp, get healed, and walk down the steps. All right, that's the plan, all right? Expectancy, that's what we're expecting. Uh, a couple of challenge verses that I just wanna share couple uh, story wrap up. Jeremiah 20 verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. I wonder, I ask, God's word would challenge us. Is it a fire in our bones that we cannot be quiet? That we cannot shut, what, cannot shut up. It's a fire shut up in my bones. Listen, uh, Melissa was saying, this is, that my boy might be an evangelist. I think my daughter might be a worship leader, but my, my son may be an evangelist. She said, she said she's at Walgreens a couple days ago, and uh, he was uh, making a little noise. She said, no, 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 be quiet. And then he got louder. He was like, he wanted everybody to hear him. And um, he was being, he was pretty loud. And, and we were at uh, the restaurant yesterday for a minute, and I said, Kayla, and, you know, I was like, inside boy. And he got, Wah! And uh, so, uh, you know what, that's the little, uh, I'm, I'm preaching, I'm speaking that on, evangelist, all right. Yeah. Right now, Melissa is just saying, calm down, Kayla. All right. Second Timothy 1.12, challenge first. 
which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed. Who would say I am not ashamed? For I know whom I have believed. Right. And I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. <coughs> Listen, I have to brag on my close friend, and I know he's a close friend to Sam, but Paul Gaskin, he's a youth children, he's a slash pastor, I guess. So right? that's, that's when you do a little of everything. Of course, we do a little of everything here too, right? Are you a slash dude, Dwayne? And, uh, but, but I had that, you know, brag on, on him. He's, he's, uh, he's one of those that, that is stable, and, and any time you try to compliment him, he just says, you know, I, man, I just, I just try to love people. And he'll try, he'll, I don't know how he does it, because Dwayne, he'll do like, you did last night, two hours of sleep. He'll stay up till three in the morning, uh, talking and hanging out, and then he somehow still gets the the the, the, the task up done too. And uh, but I've I've known him for for um, many years, and uh, he's one that it's because what you think about it, what drives him? I believe it's love. It's the cause of Christ. But one thing even more that I admire about Paul Gaskin, Pastor Paul is, and my friend is that he's not about his the youth or the children or the area that he's directly over uh, expanding or exploding and and just uh, boom and everybody going wow you're, you're just all that ball no he's about what well, holding the arms up of the church and of, of the pastor of the church is that true and because there's many times where they don't have youth or they don't do and instead he's setting up for a reception or he's setting up for something else and what is that about? That's about us understanding it's about the cause of Christ. It's about the cause of the kingdom as a whole. And it's the cause here, specifically locally. It's not about one area, but it's about us loving one another and understanding it's about the cause of what God has for us here as a church when we're looking at a church. Now, I'll share a couple of things, a couple of examples. One, I just want to share this. I heard this yesterday on ESPN. This if we're really for the cause, we don't get a little cough and we get frustrated and we start yelling at God. Now, there's people I see that something happens in life and they throw in the towel. How many of ever seen that? Something maybe job-wise, sickness-wise. But I heard a story uh, uh, yesterday. This biker does like bike tricks. Have, you, have anyone seen that on ESPN where these guys are jumping like, 300 feet there or so I don't know what it is but just crazy high no no safety they're twisting their dirt bikes and this guy last year did that and he landed wrong they took him to the helicopter took him to the hospital did an MRI and they said well you got like a broken wrist you got this but you're all right yeah he said wrap me up and he he went on back and did the next event did it again he falls and he like they thought he broke his neck. They do an MRI, all right? They said, no, your neck's not broke, but it's, you know, badly sprained. And he said, give me some pain medicine. He goes and does another event that he's in, and he wins gold. I, I, I don't know, how, how do you do it? But they wrap his wrist. And he's basically, like, wrapped up, and he wins uh, gold in, that, in a, a different event. You know what the difference is? Is not that he's doing the greater cause or the greatest cause of Christ, but he feels called and they are all in when they're doing those events. When they're doing those kind of things I will not do, all right? Uh, that's too scary. But you know what? People understand it and uh, they show, show the pictures. I, I grabbed a couple of Patty here. But how many of us will have the determination that when no one else is looking, we're still going to live for Jesus? How many of us will say that I will still spread the good news? I will do what God's called me to do. You know, whether it's music, whether it's helping with kids, whether it's something else I haven't heard of. I, I've had a, a hope for sharing some ideas with with uh, the, the rock thing, I guess, happened out there. But, but look, I mean, these are just a few pictures. But, man, she is out there, and the community is being cleaned up. But I ask, God would ask, God would ask us, will we stand for Jesus when it's not popular, when maybe not everyone else is? Will we do it like David, run after the enemy? Will we be on our knees praying when we don't feel it? 
When we get up, listen, I believe people jump out of bed, get out of bed, maybe some need some coffee, all right? But after that, and get excited when you have something to live for. Amen. Listen, I have something to live for. Right. Jesus, yes, but I have a wonderful wife. Uh, I get up, I'm excited. I have two wonderful children. I go, I get to go to work. I get to go to church. Uh, you know what? The, what is the alternative? You know what? I could be, uh, you know, not in a walk. I, I could be on these different things. But listen, praise the Lord Amen. and what we get to do. That's right. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 4 1, last scripture I'm going to share this morning. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Listen, we do have a cause personally for the cause, number one, of love, a relationship with Jesus, spreading God's love, but we have a cause as Christians, a purpose for each one of our lives, but then as a church. Listen, there are very few spirit-filled churches in this area. But you know what? Sometimes people think it's just about what you do in a church service. The purpose, we went over this for a few weeks, Pentecost Sunday and a few weeks after. The purpose of being spirit-filled is empowerment to witness. Empowerment to live the life. So New Destiny Church and friends, we're here, what? We're going to be different. Three months from now, six months from now. Listen, I am excited what God's doing, but I'm also excited and expecting what He's going to do. So if you bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment, there are many things we'll pray for before we leave. But when Dave plays this song, in just a moment softly, I just want to ask that you, we, would reflect and check our hearts because, yes, it can get tough, it can get tiresome, and yes, we have to make sure we're doing what God wants, but most of all, that first point, character, integrity. Are we laying it all at the cross? There's things that can hold us back because we are bitter, we've not forgiven, we're holding on to the past. The Lord God calls us to to lay it all at the cross and to say, I'm moving forward. And so I'd say right now, I want to ask this question. We'll pray for other things as well before we leave. If you say, yes, I do want to live for the cause, as David did, as many others did, and as Peter eventually did, you'd say, yes, the cause of Christ. And I want to live for the cause, the cause that God has for me. And just raise your hand and let God see your hand. If that's you, raise your hand and say, that's me. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to ask of those that will to find a place at, at the altar. But if you stay your seat, that's fine. But God, allow God to speak as they plays this song softly in just a moment. Lord God, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you, Lord God, would do your work in each one of our lives. And Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that we would not falter by situations. That we would not falter by circumstances but instead we would keep our eyes focused on you instead we would stand stand and keep standing whether we feel like it or not we would do it according to what your word says and Lord God I thank you we thank you in Jesus name let's pray as we just move this song with a new future to come.